Hello and welcome to today's CSS tutorial. Today we're going to talk about uh, materialized CSS, which is inspired by Google's material design. So here on this page of material.io, you can find all the guidelines and principles of material design, icons, components, accessibility guidelines, and all sort of stuff here. So I'm going to divide this tutorial into two parts. The first part is going to be about um, well, an introduction to materialized CSS. That is all, everything about uh, components and uh, media and grid system, colors, shadow, all sort of stuff. And the next one would be m more about the JavaScript related concepts in material materialized uh, CSS. And also we'll make a very beautiful project together as well. Now, in order to get it started, go to materializecss.com and click on getting started under download section, download materialize. Once you've downloaded that, you can find something like this here, like there's a CSS folder, the JavaScript folder and a license. So I've added these images myself and I've also uh, created an index.html, which is like empty page here. So normally what you would do and what how you want to start things is by uh, going like doing an exclamation mark and pressing tab and then you will have this boilerplate here ready. But we are going to use what Materialize has provided for us. And before that, let's also add an extension here that's live server. So if you don't have it, it makes life much easier. So go to extensions, type in live server, install this and restart your code editor. So it's great if you want to, for example, whenever you make some changes to the source code and you click on live server or go live, these changes will be um, immediately reflected in the in the, uh, the web page. So as soon as you save your code, those changes will be seen immediately there. Okay, now uh, that's it. So let's get started. I'm going to do it like that so that we can see much better what's happening. And here as well. Okay, so we need to go down below, by the way, where we download this stuff, under setup, under HTML setup, and we are going to, to copy this boilerplate that Materialize provides and paste it in. So it's basically importing Google's icon fonts and linking to the style sheet that we've downloaded and also linking to the JavaScript as well that we've downloaded. So let's just save this one and let's get started. So under the body tag here. <clears throat> so how most CSS frameworks um, work is basically by adding classes to elements so that you can change their colors, their size, their layout and all sort of stuff. Now we're going to have an h1 now for the beginning and that h1 this heading one tag is going to have this content of heading one now if i save this control save i see it here on the web page but there is no special color to the background now to add background color to it of course we need to add a class and that class would be red if i save you can see red is the background color here if I want to change the color of the text, which is black, I can just simply add, let's say, blue dash text. So whatever dash text. And if I save this, you can see now the color has changed. It's so easy. If I want to change the background color to be darker, I can simply add another attribute, darken and dash like three, for instance. And you can see now it's darker. If I want to lighten or darken the text, I can use the word text dash then darken or lighten and number between one and four normally. So let's say three. And now we can see this blue is lighter. So you can know all about these colors by going to materialize uh, under CSS, under color. You can see a whole list of these colors. You can see darken with their names and uh, numbers and attributes. Okay, let's get back. Now I'm going to get rid of these light and darken things here. I will just leave the, the red. Now I'm going to create two more heading ones by simply uh, pressing shift, alt, down arrow twice, 
and I'm going to change this red to blue and this red to green. Now if I save this, you can see I have these three H1 elements here. Now about the adjustments, so if I want to center align this text that is put in the center, I can simply use the words center dash align and if I save, you see now it's in the center. So if I increase, you see, it's still in the center. Now, if I want to right align them, for example, the green one, I can simply add right dash align. And if I save, it would go to the right like this. Okay, let's get rid of these alignments again. So this and this here, if I save this, go back. Okay, now uh, another thing is about uh, one of the most important reasons that people use frameworks is to making responsive um, web pages using grid systems. So Materialize uses a 12 column grid system. That is, it divides uh, a, an element uh, into 12 parts, the screen size into 12 parts. So on small screens and medium size and large screens, all they have 12 columns. So I can specify that when the screen is small, I want this heading 1 to occupy 12 columns, that is the whole width. When the screen gets to medium size, I want it to have occupy only half. Also this one half, this one also half. And when the screen gets bigger, I want it to occupy one third, that is four columns. The four columns, four columns, so that they would be next to each other on the same row. So for that, let me cut everything here. We need to have a, um, a div with a class of row. And I'm going to paste everything else here, like red, blue, and green. Nothing changes here. So now that we have one row, we need to specify these as columns. So what I want to do is just to press here and then uh, press and hold Alt key and also click here. So that whatever I write here will be also here as well. So I can give them a column class, so the, these will be columns. And on small screens, S, I want them to occupy 12 columns, that is the whole width, when the screen is small. When the screen gets medium size, I want them to occupy half the page, that is 6 columns out of 12. And when the screen is larger, I want them to occupy 4 columns out of 12, that is 1 third. Now if I save this, you can see nothing much happens here because the screen is small. If I get a big bigger, you see this is medium sized, and they've occupied half the page and they're next to each other. And if the screen goes bigger like this, you can see that they've occupied one third, that's four columns each. So this is how great this looks on, on different screen sizes. Good. Now, Sometimes you do not want one item to be shown um, on a specific size screen. For example, I don't want the blue one to be there when the screen is small on mobile phones, for instance. Maybe, I don't know, it's a video or something, and I don't want it to be shown on mobile screens. So I can simply, inside that class, I can add hide dash on dash small dash only. It means hide it on only small screens. So if I save this, because the screen is small now, it is hidden. And if I go medium, it appears again, and also on the big ones. So now, if I want to make it disappear on medium size and smaller screens, I can simply add, oops, hide on med, dash, and dash down. So hide on medium and down, which is smaller. So if I save this, you can see it's still hidden on medium, it's also hidden on larger screen, it appears. Now, another beautiful concept, uh, let me get rid of this hidden thing here. Another beautiful and nice concept uh, with uh, materialize is the issue of container. So the concept of a container is because you can see now there is no space here, no margin left and right, everything's so stuck to the, to the borders. So what we can do is put everything inside a container and then there would be some margin left and right and they would be in the center. So what I can do here is just to cut everything and let's create another div with a class of container like so and paste everything in here 
Now if I save this, now you can see everything. Uh, you know, it's in the center, there is some nice margin left and right, like so. So beautiful. So you can normally put the content of your web page inside a container so that it is like this. Okay. Now that we have covered this part as well, let's get to uh, nav bar and making responsive navs. I'm drinking coffee. Coffee. So to make a nav bar, you need to have a nav tag and because it's semantic um, HTML, a nav tag. And now inside a nav tag, we need to wrap everything well inside a nav wrapper. So that will be dot nav dash wrapper wrapper like so. And then we can have um, two things now. The first one is the logo, and the second one is the menu items or links. So for the logo, we can have an A tag with a class of brand dash logo. And now if I press tab, uh, well, I don't want it to go anywhere. And let's just call it logo, like so. Not brand logo, but just logo. Okay, now under this, I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Under this logo, we need to have a UL and on order list with a class of right. So this is floating. So you can just simply add a class right to the items and they would float it or push it towards the right. So UL dot right dot I also want it to be hidden on small screens. So hide on dash small dash only. Because on small screens, we'll use something uh, like a burger menu later in, in the next video. And that should be good already. Now, inside this on order list, we need to have several list items. And in each list item, let's have one A tag. Uh, because we want people to click on it to go somewhere. So let's just call it home. Let's have two more of these and about and contact here. And if I save this. I can see because this is small screen, you cannot see the items. And if I go a bit bigger, you see they appear here. And also like this. This is a super nice kind of effect as well. I can change, of course, the color by adding this class of, let's say, blue. And if I save, you see now we have a cute little nav bar here. Later you will see that we actually add also an ID of nav mobile to it. Uh, ID equals nav dash mobile to it. So, so that we can use a burger menu and when we click on it, the menu will pop up. Not for now. Okay, so now you can see how beautiful also making a uh, nav, an easy making a nav bar is. Now let's get rid of the nav bar and let's talk about uh, buttons. So buttons, well, you can have a simple button like this, uh, like button, ugly HTML button like so, it's not anything special. So what you can do is to um, create a button with a class of BTN, and then you will see the difference now. So look at these two, how different they are. So this one has some shadow and hover effect as well. And it's been all in low, um, uppercase as well, the, the contents. And I can make it larger by simply adding button btn dash large. So that would create a large button like so. You can also uh, make button out of a tags. Out of a tags, for example, I would say a dot btn and uh, if I say something like button here, you can see it's the same. If I add button large, it will be the same as this one. Or you can also change the color, of course, to, for instance, red, and you will see this happens. So easy. Now, a beautiful thing about the materialize is um, making, um, adding icons to these, which is so beautiful. Let me show you what I mean. Now, let's say, uh, well, we have this button. And let's just call it, I don't know, add, for example. So now you have add here. And I want to add an icon to the next to it. 
to right so what I can do is just to add an i tag like this but our i tag should have a class so we can say i dot material dash icons and press tab and you'll see we have an i tag no content in here so in order to know what the icons are so I can simply go to the icons and here you can see a list of all the icons available for example add itself with an icon and this will be it so I can uh, let me go back I can add where was that here like add and if I save this you see this icon appears on the left it's not that nice so I want to push it to the right so right here inside this class I can just add a right to it and now you see it's on the right how cool so or for example I don't know oops not send sorry here but here maybe send like that you see and also send to the text as well like this so it's really beautiful now there's another concept called a um, what's that called again floating action buttons so for that we need to have an a tag you will see it's a round thing and btn dash floating so makes it a round or circle kind of button and um, a that yeah that should create something now here let's add also just like we did with the uh, this icon class another icon dot i dot material dash icons and if i save this and let's just say cloud this time you see this beautiful little thing here so this is called a floating action button and you can also add some effects to these buttons using uh, pulse for example um, uh, pulse effect so i would just add a class of pulse to this one and you can see now this is like pulse effect here you can add it to everything as well okay so that is so cool you will, well we'll see more of these later as well all right now uh let's get rid of these buttons and uh, let's get to images how about images so we can have in um, responsive images as well as videos as well so let's just create a row because we are going to have some columns and um, let's have a column when it's small screen occupy uh, all the width and when it's medium size half of it and now inside that let's have an image a container so that will be just an image tag and i have an image already so this is going to be my image and if i press save you see this is happening here and it's not that responsive as you can see so i can make it responsive by adding a class to it and the class is going to be responsive dash img and if i save this you can see now it fits now inside the screen it's so cool so this is how it works image uh, responsive da dash image i can also add another class of circle to it and it will turn it into a circle but it's not exactly a circle but yeah you know what i mean now this circle does not have any shadows so i can add some shadows to whatever element in, uh, in, in my html by adding z dash depth dash a number between one and five so let's say three and you can see now there is kind of slight shadow here instead of shadow i can make it hoverable that is if i hover over it i will see some effects so for that well i need to add the class hoverable to whatever element and now if i hover over it you see there is this shadow appearing here awesome and what about videos well videos like youtube videos i can also make them responsive by adding a video container class so let's just have a column first dot call dot s12 dot m6 and inside that let's have a video dash container class and that video container is going to contain our videos now i have a youtube video here you should see now we like this one let's just copy the embed code here for it 
and let's just not not here let's just uh, paste it here and if I save this you see it is responsive here so if I go oops not this one bigger you see that it occupies only this part and if I go smaller it occupies like um, 12 columns here as well so this is this is so cool for videos as well okay now let's get to cards so now we've covered in media that is videos and uh, what is it also images now let's get to cards which are my favorite so for making cards in materialize you can have well let's just have a row because we're going to have two columns so let's have a div with a class of row like this and let's have some columns like call is going to occupy yes 12 when it's small and six or let's say four actually when it's uh, medium size now inside that let's have a card class this is basically how it starts so a class card and you can give it a color actually let's give it a color of teal for example now this card can have a card um, title section can have a card image can have a card content section card action sections so let's start by adding card content so card dash content and that content is going to be like a p tag with some lorem ipsum like 10 words 10 random words here and if i well save it you should see only this part here now let's add right under the card content let's add also card dash action for some links and for those links uh, here we can have an a tag and let's just say read more for example read more that's it and you can see this nice uh, kind of uh, subtle line here as well and this is our link so this is a very basic form of card now we're going to add image to it now let's so let's start by making it more uh, sophisticated so let's get rid of these here I guess and this as well what else uh-huh yeah this is good already I guess okay now so inside again we have to have a card class now underneath let's have inside it let's have a card dash image class first let's give it the image so img is going to be what well, the image that i already have this one and under the image i want actually a title on top of the image so i can add a span tag with a card dash title class so card dash title class and let's just call it uh, card title nothing fancy and what else can we have here yeah that's already good for the image now under the div image div that is so this is our card image now let's have the card content here so that card dash content is going to be yeah just a p tag with some lorem ipsum and and then the rest is the same as before that is um what was it card action so card dash action and it's going to be an a tag with something like more now if i save this look at this it's so cute and so nice right so you can see the card title here you can see some lorem ipsum some fine line here and this here as well this is so nice now uh, of course you can add some uh, shadow to it as well for instance if I go bigger uh, let's just add shadow so let's just say Z dash depth dash four and you can see now there is some shadow to it so nice I can also change of course the color is here here as well okay now that we have this one let's add one more thing I just want to have something here that is uh, like a floating action button that I told you about right here and pulsing so for that let's go down right below the title span let's add a floating 
uh, button. So a dot btn dash floating creates an a tag with a btn of floating. And for now, if I just say, I don't know, like plus, for instance, if I save this, it's not nice. You would see it here. Everything gets messed up. So I want it to be halfway. That is here, right here, halfway. And actually there is this class called halfway fab that we can add to this button. So basically halfway dash fab for floating action button. And if I save this now, you see, it appears here, so cool. I can also give it a class of pulse as well, and maybe a red as well. So it is like that. But now let's deal with the icon. Of course, for icons, I already told you that you need to have an i tag with a class of material dash icons. And that's going to be something like add. So this is much, much better now, like so. How easy this is to make a uh, the, the card like this so cool okay so we have everything like the card is already I guess yeah now let's get rid of everything again and let's talk about oops uh, maybe not everything yeah yeah let's just get rid of everything here all the divs and let's talk about forms now so forms are going to be the last part of this tutorial for today okay for forms uh, let's have again a row because I want the form to occupy half the page and then on this side maybe there is an image or a map or something like that. So the form is going to be, uh, yeah, so form dash call dash, uh, sorry, dot s12 dot m6, so something like this. And action, yeah, it does not go anywhere. So under this, so this is one column. Now let's have another row. Why? Because I'm going to put um, text inputs into also columns as well. So let's have an input field. And this is the class input dash field in Material CSS for having inputs and. Uh, this one is going to occupy, uh, well, it's going to be a column first. Occupy S6, when the screen is small, occupy half of it, and also for above. So this is going to be, um, what is it, in, an input. So input, type text, name, I don't give it a name, ID, yeah, let's just call it F name for first name. And let's also give it a placeholder, so, the, or I don't need that. Well, let's just give it anyways. So name. So first name. Not here. Yeah. And we can also give it a label as well, although we have a placeholder already, but just for the sake of this video, we can label four and the it should be the same as the ID, like F name here. So so that they are linked together. Now if I save this, you see we have this cute little input field here and here let's just give it a label as well first name and you can see appears here well we can deal with the um, this distance as well later so now that we have one let's create another one down below like so and this one for we can choose it for last name um, let's make it small like this now for this one would be yeah, L name for last name and last name would be the label also here L name the placeholder also last name okay so you can see this is so cool already and let's have another one and this time this is going to be uh, type email and we can give it a class of give it a class of uh, validate so we can also validate emails here using well you can also use it um, yeah use the HTML as well validation as well but let's have it like so so if I enter something like I don't know a number it would turn red because it's not an email but if I say add something again you see 
it says it's okay because there is some add sign here okay uh, yeah what else okay let's just also put it in the center I haven't talked about V align by the way so I'm going to talk about it now so let's say we have like our form would have a height of around 25 rems for example so let's just do it here so style equals height height of 25 rems let's say this is the style now this is the height of it and to see how it looks like so if i just say blue we should see now it's like 25 rems to put everything in the center like vertically align them I can add in a class vAlign wrapper to it. So I would say vAlign dash wrapper. And if I save this, you see now everything comes down and it's vertically aligned. And of course, the color is uh, so I can say white. Uh, oh, yeah, either here or I don't know what happened yeah but this one I think might be a bit tricky to change the color of these I guess yeah because yeah you need need to um, yeah change them in CSS by adding something like important yeah, so that should be the case, I suppose. Yeah, what if I just add it here, actually? It should work, I guess, no? Nope, it doesn't. Okay, well, anyways, this is... Uh, oh, yeah, finally. So this happened for the label. Yeah, because for the placeholders, that's different, of course. So that doesn't work for placeholders, but it worked for <laughs> the labels. Okay, so uh, that was actually the last thing. Oh, one more thing that I just remembered is is adding some icons before these as well. This is the very cute part. So uh, let's go here and right after the input field, that is before the input, like text or first name, for instance. Let's have an i tag here with the material, material dash icons. Um, um, class and also another class called prefix so prefix puts everything right before these uh, inputs for example uh, I had these icons here let's just say I don't know, account box for instance and if I put it right inside the icon and save it you can see that this appears right here so uh, let's get rid of this uh, blue thing so you can see this appears right here how cool and easy so you can add more icons to this so I don't know if, for example add alarm and uh, uh, where, where is that well let's just add this one down below right here and uh, let's just say add alarm I guess yes and this happens here and you can also add some others so this is how it works and it's so cool and you can you can see that whenever you click on it this gets active and in focus so that's the color as well okay that was it for today uh, 33 oh wow 34 minutes <clears throat> thank you very much for watching and listening don't forget to like and subscribe please and leave a comment if you want to bye